What's popular, YouTube? Another day, another demo. We are looking at Searson today. Sorry to spoil it. Did you not guess? The opera of 2021. The opera of all time, baby. The best German player in CSGO. The GOAT. He plays on 1280 by 960. Searson, he got top nine. The first German to get in top nine in 2020. He's a bit of an onliner, yeah. But he can change that this year. We'll see. Qualified to the spring finals with big. Whole team's looking exquisite. Just forget that 116-1 loss versus phase on Nuke. One of the worst maps of CS I've ever analyzed, ever watched in my life. We don't have to talk about that at all. What we should talk about is the fact that Searson has had two tournaments in a row this year where he has just been frying. Okay, Fun Spark Ulti into Blast Groups. 1.20 rating into 1.31 rating over 13 maps. De he is he's the best performing opera at the moment if you want to count them both of course you know simple like Z simple zywu they didn't play in the in the fun spark ulti but yeah a little bit of click you guys tell me you guys tell me all the time you guys tell me i don't clickbait enough so i just i wanted to do this for you i did it for you not for me all right and seriously he doesn't talk enough he doesn't do any interviews he doesn't have enough fans so i had to clickbait him in the title and thumbnail everything like that don't try to throw him a bone get more eyes on searson seer god okay Let's hop into it. This game is an absolute farm. It's a 20. He went 27 and six or something like that on the first half on CT side. Didn't miss a shot. Super clean decisions. Everything he does looks obvious and correct. And I'll just point out a, a few small things about how he thought of it so easily and so quickly and moved into it that you wouldn't have noticed that there was that was such a smart move. And apart from that, every shot was was nuts. And then he hit a few really nuts, you know, really precise flicks on top of it. So it's a nice frag movie to watch. It's a quick one. I, I went to watch the second half just because it was so fast through the first, but it's a good one, man. Let's talk about Searson. Hope you enjoy that. And I'll be back with some more um, of the debuts, Magis Dupree and whoever else I missed. Okay. Uh, for the next videos, stay tuned. Okay. Let's hop into the d -d 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 demo. We are here with Searson. Searson, the mom with the plan. <clears throat> um, the best opper, <clears throat> the best opper, the best opper, Searson. Yeah, you guys like a little clickbait. You guys tell me, why don't you clickbait, man? I, I love your videos, but dude, you need to work on your clickbait and get some more clickbait so more people can watch the videos. All right, here it is, the clickbait. Searson, uh, it doesn't get, <clears throat> dude. I want to watch this out x-ray so bad. I was casting this match. This is a blast game from the group. And, uh, you know, it's delicious, man. It's it's going to be a frag movie, you know. It's me watching for the shots, the beautiful shots that get hit. You know, it's partial clickbait, but at the same time, in terms of just rating, like since he played V4 Budapest and cleaned up there, plus he played the blast group and, like, played really well at the group and was not as high rated as Zaiwu on the group overall, but probably... Had more op kills. I didn't look that up, but probably had more op kills overall. Searson's usually... Oh, he's got a little movement too. You see how he hit the B-hop. Um, uh, Searson had... Searson definitely... Like, most of the time, Searson has way, way more op kills than other offers. Like, uh, Zaiwu Simple, they've been rifling a lot of T-sides. Even some of their CT rounds and stuff, but... Seriously, most of the time he's picking up. I talk, I'm talking about this while he's rifling. Yeah, I get that. I get that, guys. I'm over it. Let's move on. He hasn't died yet. That's why he didn't buy the op. It's coming. Don't worry. We're going to see, see, see some absolutely crazy shots. I mean, what is there to say about Searson? He's a CT side specialist. He got top nine. He got top nine as the only German player in the history of CSGO. CSGO specifically. Which I don't remember when the HLTV ranking started, but it wasn't even that far before CSGO. But either way, the only German CSGO player to get uh, in the top 10. And he got a top 9 in 2020. He's a bit of an onliner, you know. We don't know how well he's going to play online. But at this point, we've seen how good he is. I, I think it'll it'll probably translate. I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt, you know what I'm saying? Bottom calling smoke here. Um... He, his accuracy is just actually, it's, it's, it's a sight to behold. It, he's the crown jewel of Big Clan right now, of Germany as a whole. And actually Big started to play really well with Favin, with Calling in this group. 
qualified to the spring final already. But uh, the one constant was Searson. Death, taxes, and Searson. You know? Pretty much. At least right now. I think he actually did see a, fa a foot, a fought. <laughs> he saw a feet there when he he saw the f he saw the f he saw a little shoe on the cross. So it's not lucky that shot wasn't lucky though. Shot was skills. You know who was unlucky? Astralis. Even though they have, you know what I mean. You get the joke. Okay. Oh, wow, such an easy round. He makes it look so simple. That's also another quality of Sears, and he makes it look very easy with the way he locks things down. So let's check it out. Let's check it out. The fourth round of the game. Onto the op. Drop that Icarus fell to his four poor fallen teammate. Whoever it was. Lucky bastard. Got to pick up an Icarus fell. Probably my favorite M4A1S skin. Even though I don't even have one. I have a print stream with four battle scarred hollows on it. That's not bad. You saw one cross. No way he got that kill. Didn't even see Zipix. No one, he knows one's Tetris here. In a spot like this in CT, you gotta be careful. You gotta back up all the way sometimes, but... Oh, he's got a corner on the smoke. So now I see someone cross the firebox. He can molly firebox. And usually when you hear that molly, he starts swinging out. Oh, but the shot gets baited out. That's all you need to do. Very nicely done by the Eagling player. He's in the cubby. And now you're fine. He has a rifle to support. If he has an op by himself... If you're stuck here and off by yourself on CT, you back up really far because they can pop flash you from basically anywhere without even lining it up. So you don't want to sit like right by the boxes and just wait for an opening all the time. And it turns out it's not even going to be the A site. This flash is very good. I talked about flashes like this in a past video. Flashing over the roof for people. That's another example of a great supporting flash for your B site teammates. You don't even have to comment for them. And... At the pro level, you know, calming almost everything is really good. But, oh, hold on. Let's see how he handles this one-on-one. -on -one. He knows that Lucky's bench. I actually love the decision-making here. So he sees Lucky's bench, switches to the AK. And he kept holding right. You know, he kept holding the right side. So if Lucky wants to sneak out to the left, that's fine. If he sneaks out to the right and Searson lets him go, then the round becomes a lot more complicated because he can sneak out to the front of default. He can get in the sight, make Searson's life hell. But Searson just said, okay, I'll hold right only. Oh wait, then I'll start scaling a little bit to make sure Lucky can either take this one fight that I'll win or he can move into a worse position and then I'll eventually win. But yeah, in terms of calming the flashes, you can say I'm going to flash for you on the B site, but honestly, I'd say in the pug level or in a non-team environment, I wouldn't calm that flash, honestly. You could just say it just so you can tell your team if they did get blind. You can say, I, calm, I called my flash, whatever. But uh, honestly, since you're flashing behind somebody and it's like a rush is coming towards them, you might actually be doing worse to tell them because they might get confused and turn around and look at your flash. So sometimes when you flash behind someone, you just launch that bad boy. You know what I'm saying? They got a piece of cover in front of them. This is not financial advice. Game hasn't even really begun. Everyone from Big was fragging here, but... So the pre-molly there is to give him a corner of a smoke if they try to smoke window off spawn. And this angle is important to hold sometimes because the top cat smoke leaves a gap. From the CT's perspective, you don't see it as much. But from the T perspective, they can get... Shove themselves into that. Wedge themselves into that corner of that smoke. I think he's re-smoking Palace. I don't remember the lineup, but... Smoking Palace is a, is a really big one. Huge to make this play early in the round, but you see this Palace smoke plus the A-Ram smoke allows Searson to stand here, which is, uh, you know, covers everything in mid really good. Even though you have to look below you and above you, I'd still say you can kind of stand out in the open here. You're not going to get pre-fired too often. Very good way to control uh, middle. And it's brought to you by... I missed a shot. Damn it. It's brought to you by the fact that uh, you have palace control, a ram control. Keep getting these spam phone calls. This one's from the UK. Oh my god, six pairs of feet. Three pairs of feet. God damn it, six shoes. 
We've seen him miss about three, four shots this game, maybe. Other than that, <laughs> no problem at all. Uh, this okay. Wow, this is gonna be a quick one, huh? Okay, if it's too fast, I'll go through the second half. Wasn't excite. Wasn't as exciting. Serious in the frag movie. I mean, the videos don't have to be long, right? I mean, I saw some of the comments was like, "Your videos are so long. Can you make them shorter?" No, bitch, I can't. You can go on my TikTok or YouTube Shorts or something, or you could just not watch. <laughs> can you make them short? No. But if it's 10, 15 minutes instead of 27 to 40 minutes, that's okay. I'm just not going to force it. Here's another spot that's only open to you because you have palace smoked. And it's very strong versus a ramp, right? Like you're staring deep into the ramp, but like most of the time people don't want to use uh, nades to clear out the bottom of a ramp. So, and even if they flash, it's very easy to dodge. You're not going to get pop flashed here most of the time. There is a good pop flash you can throw for the close A ramp clear. It just most of the time will come. This was sick. Oh, uh, I watched this. We watched this from Astral's perspective. And Searson, instead of... This looks just like a natural move for him. But Searson, instead of staying on top of stairs and fighting towards connector with his op, immediately comes forward to the A ramp. This was such a nice adjustment from Big. Look at the shots now. He put himself in such a clean position to easily get these kills. And when I was looking at it from the other team's perspective on X-Ray, uh, you really can't appreciate it, honestly, watching this POV. Because it, it looked so obvious, but most people, I think, would have fought into connector there with the op. That was really good. From Searson and from Big. I think Zipix is the one on default, and Tizian's going to approach him. It's perfect, really. Not much he can do there. Conflict's too far away to fight this. Yeah, it's over. You can see him in jungle. Jungle, as they say in Sweden, actually. Jungle, yum for yoy. Oh, and the two flashes come out, so instead of doing the jump, he goes for the left side of window, ends up being the correct play. Another clean, smooth decision. Searson doesn't talk much. He actually had surgery three days before this match and apparently he couldn't even sit down uh for more than three hours because of his surgery sounds like a back surgery i don't know i had some back problems so this sounds very familiar to me but no it wasn't specified anywhere but he apparently was like sick after his surgery after each match he had to go to sleep right away and just heal up and i mean all of that is just like what Searson just actually put down some crate actually ridiculous score lines real nutty halfway through the match there's a, there's some even more there's a couple of crazy there's one I don't want to spoil anything but there's a round it gets a little bit I'm telling you stay tuned actually overrated can't even decide how he wants to kill him oh look at that shot oh. <laughs> only saw that in the highlights after Searson oh flashes oh he misses the jump up he could have he could have and then look at this in underpass so he was solo in the spot I'd actually I think when we were casting, I thought he dropped in here by accident, but... Or I thought he came in uh, into underpass on purpose, I should say. Yeah, Astralis just said, okay, we can't win in the post plan. Let's just try to throw caution on the wind here. So, again, um, no top cat smoke. He doesn't get flashed off mid, so he makes a jump. There's one. He's not done yet. Old Searson wouldn't be this aggressive, by the way. Taking the shot for a second. Take that, not even a floor bang. No other, no other icons in the kill feed except for a headshot. And speaking of headshots, bro, this guy is, this guy is the sniper of all time. He is the sniper of all time. 
See that purposefully non-loaded statement right there? He is the sniper of all time. He is the sniper of 2022 blockbuster performance from Searson. It's actually mad as they would say in the UK, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing you can do if an op can walk to the top of mid and kill you at the top of mid off the off flicks like that. There's it's not your fault. Yeah, uh, that's okay. That was his second death of the entire game, by the way. And Glaive had to hit that crazy shot, and that was even great awareness from Searson to spot in the mid. Ooh, okay, took a lot of damage there. Missed that. It's okay. I f the way he's holding that, I'm like, is he holding? He's not holding for someone to jump across. He's like kind of holding for a, a jungle lurk almost with how far to the right he was holding that. Maybe he was holding for someone to jump across. I don't know. I feel like naturally I would hold over top of the bricks. I thought that they were going to come from the from inside window. Part of this game plan from big and a lot of good teams. You know, in these mid-round situations, take over a ramp control. Searson worried about this window timing again. Now, on CT side, if you're not going to play in window off spawn, especially with your op, but Searson going there a lot, you don't break open the crate. And the reason is for this. In these situations where you leave mid later, uh, you don't want that crate broken open. The T's can't go through. And you know what you're thinking. Yeah, the kid loaded. They could just break the crate. Yes, they could shoot the crate, but they have to make noise. And wow, there it is. He won't let that glaive occurrence happen twice. Be sure about it too. Searson, solid cross here for an offer. He just, he's just never. He was just never in a bad spot. Level. He is a level ninety nine awareness player. He's a maximum awareness player. In in my opinion, Searson is. He's not. A, he's not elite. I thought he was going to become. Elite. That was my prediction. I thought him and Poison were both getting to a point. Poison totally fell off. Uh, but in terms of their awareness, clutch potential, op proficiency, and uh, you know how much they could take down other elite oppers, I feel like Sears and Poison, they both were. They both were developing well. I don't know. If Poison's getting another team, another chance, but he definitely fell off in a bigger way and was never top nine like Searson was. But. Uh, Listen, if if Favin turns in the player he's supposed to, and Sir, I mean, and Searson does this, and then they have Tapson as the IGL and a high fragging IGL at that, Big can can actually be a really top team. I mean, they really can. But those other two things are just you have to wait and see. It's not immediately obvious. It's not like Modesty going to G two. Favin never had that much hype. It it was more like. People who knew him knew how good he was, but he's been great. He's Fabin's definitely bringing this team wins. Just picking them off like grapes. Crushing their heads like blueberries between an index and a thumb right there. You know, I don't make short form content because I don't consume short form content. And I think a lot of YouTubers complain about different things, like uh, like you have to do this, you have to do this a certain way, you have to do this a certain way. I actually don't think that's true. I just don't think that they're good at how they do it. But I actually believe that the algorithm is good enough to allow people to fill their niche up no matter what they do, whether it's do shorter videos or longer videos or certain styles of content. I just think that people are unwilling to accept that they just might not be making good videos, you know? They might not just make videos that the people that want to watch their videos want to watch. Do you know what I'm saying? I've seen some channels recently that... Uh, I've seen some channels recently. I'm like, huge channels, but their views are going down. And their titles are got, have gotten so bad because they're trying to play the YouTube game. And unfortunately, it's a weird cycle where they're like, they make good videos, but their views are going down. So then they try to do the thing where they like, appease the general population of YouTube, whatever they believe that is. This game is over, right? 
Uh, but then, like with the certain titles that they use, where they try to make them mainstream clickbaity titles, it's hard to know what videos are actually going to be good, you know? Because you know that they're just making those titles to make most people, ha their non-subs happy or whatever, but I personally think it's only making things worse for them. It's tough. It's tough, the YouTube game. It's fun, though. I can, no matter how what you think people will tell you about how to make YouTube videos, I can show you a content creator that's successful in their own niche, doing it completely their own way. Hundo P. He's not a rifler. He's definitely not a rifler, but he's not a JDM. He's not a Draken. He's not a Makalele. He hits all his op shots. He can rifle. They just... This team has structure, and they can... If they can afford the op, then they give him the op. That's how it goes. So, we see, okay, some clips from Searson, but unlike players like Simple and Zaibu and other ones that you might want to compare to Searson or the... You know, the player you hope he's going to become. He ops more. Yeah, he ops more than everyone else, pretty much. But you can see his spray is fine. I mean, he looks comfortable on the rifle and everything like that. Cover him. He needs to plant. Seriously, so covering himself. Oh, now there's no chance. Now it's time to stay alive. And he does. It comes close. I put in players view bob and view model and uh, resolution, but I grab it from their pro settings. So sometimes they're it's not up to date. Apparently, Rops is view bob. He uses like twenty one view bob or something crazy. I would ne first of all, I would never play like that. But apparently, switched to make it higher. But I didn't know that, and it wasn't updated on his pro settings. So I gotta check if they stream basically. See if they have up to date. Stuff in their stream. But what if I go check their stream and then I write exclamation crosshair in chat and then they uh, see that I was in chat? Or what if they're live when I'm recording and they see me looking for their settings and they know I'm going to make a video about them? I don't want that. That's none of their business. I should be able to make YouTube videos about whoever I want, say whatever I want, and there should be no repercussions. I'm telling you, the rest of this game is pointless. Pops up, Zaddy. Good awareness to smoke that molly before it came. Just right away. You know, another simple, easy decision for Searson, right? He just makes everything seem so obvious with the way he executes on all of his choices. Don't get me wrong, he can play bad. But right now, he's not. Right now, he is that consistent across two tournaments so far. So... He had more unbelievable maps than everybody, I think, this this uh, last event. Rops had a really unbelievable map. Zaiwu had a really great map. Um, Nico had an unbelievable map. Simple didn't really... Navi are not really all there yet. Getting better, though. Obviously, Monacy. We probably got to watch the Monacy. Should we watch the guy? Should we watch the Monacy video? The Monacy demo? I did. I just did a Monacy video and I got to do Dupree. I got to do Magisk. I got to do, I don't know. I got to do everyone. There's still some more debuts to run through. But I'm like, man, I got to watch that Monacy 1v4, right? I mean, that's one of the 1v4s of all time. See how I did that? One of the 1v4s in history. I've never watched the tail end of a game that was so pointless. This is it. They put him on an op. He goes pallet. It's the right adjustment. It's all they need to do now. Clean it up, Searson. Oh, he, hit, he actually hit config too. That's the sad part about that situation. Don't tell me it's a round with Glocks. Imagine. Just imagine.
can hold this until you get shoulder peaked. And if you miss your shot, then you got to figure out a new way to, uh, to on this spot. Let's watch Searson squirm a little bit as he tries to gr grab back space. But he does find a way out, and then he continues to have kills. This is a very nice move. You just see, I just released the pin basically on his play. And another freebie, another great awareness round from Searson. He wins the game. He had, uh, let's let's look at the stats, man. Let's just go ahead and, and check it out here. Okay, Searson, he's on the, he's the GOAT. 1280 by 960, GOAT res. Simple Zywu Monacy Searson, okay? GOAT res. 2.31 rating, <laughs> bro, what is this? Uh, 104, he's got 180R for every hertz you got right now on your monitor. Seven deaths, but if we go to the CT side, uh, he went 26 and three in that first half, 26 and three, and then ended 32 and seven. And that was not the only, That I mean, first of all, it's been two tournaments again, like I said, he's been farming. He had this one terrible map versus... This is one of the worst maps of Counter-Strike I've ever watched in my life, actually. I don't understand how this big came out of nowhere when, like, all the other versions... It wasn't Searson's fault or anyone's fault. They were all... Try, it was, they were not throwing the right basic grenades. It was really bad. Outside of that, even versus phase on Overpass, this 24 and 7, 2.22 rating map, bro is eating the right food. The surgery fixed it up. Whatever it was that needed to be fixed, it worked. They need, he needs to tip that surgeon. So Searson, the best, ah, oh shit, I fucked it up. The opera of all time. I hope you enjoyed that one, as always. Smoking dope, reciting raps out on the patio. My pops said you ain't.